So if you're a seller, going back to the earlier example, it's not just that you can create a proposal faster, it's that your actual deal cycle time should improve. You should be able to handle more customers because of the tools that you have available to you. You should theoretically be able to close deals faster. And as a result of that, you should be able to drive more revenue or you should be able to be more efficient with your selling. Welcome to the Microsoft Cloud Executive Enablement Series, where we speak with Microsoft Cloud senior leaders and experts about the latest trends in technologies we're seeing in the market. The goal of this series is to share with you and your teams our perspective on the business value driven by the Microsoft Cloud for our mutual customers and the opportunities for our partners to grow their business with Microsoft. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Microsoft Cloud Executive Enablement Series. This topic today is about AI enablement and I'm excited to be here with you. My name is Kara Wanigatimor. I run the Microsoft 365 Customer Advocacy Group and I'm here with my good friend and colleague Uriel. We're going to take you through the opportunity that's available. I'd like Uriel, my good friend, to introduce himself to you. Uriel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you, Caruana. It's great to be here with you and with our partners. My name is Uriel Ruchdain. I lead partner marketing for business applications and for modern work. That's a big portfolio. That's a lot of work right there. So much change is happening. Um, Earl, you and I have known each other for a really long time now, actually. We've been through a lot. We have. It's been really great to see the development within the technology portfolio over that time. And the work that we've done together previously is really standing us in good stead now as we think about the new opportunities on the horizon with artificial intelligence and with Copilot. It's absolutely true. Well, you know, some people don't know that I used to be a Microsoft partner. And so I have a special place in my heart for what it means to build a business around Microsoft technologies. I always find it uh, tremendously challenging, but also so rewarding. And I, I feel like now is an opportunity that I really haven't seen in, in a long time in our space. Yeah, I would agree. And that perspective of being on the partner side is so valuable. I too come from a Microsoft partner background and know what it's like to be in the ecosystem. The opportunity that we have in front of us, we talk about it as being once in a generation type of opportunity. This is absolutely one of the big paradigm shifts that we're seeing happening right in front of us. And that's why it's so important that we take the time to make sure that everybody understands the dynamics of what's happening in the market and how they can take advantage of that in terms of building that into their business and, and engaging with their customers. Absolutely. And that's what we're going to cover today in this conversation. We're going to talk about the landscape. We're going to talk about the opportunity, the skilling that's necessary, but also all of the resources that we're really bringing to the table from a Microsoft perspective to support our partners in that space. To kick off and to get started, let's talk a little bit about the AI market landscape and, and what else we see there. Copilot came into my life, I want to say maybe three months ago, uh, and, and poof, we've just been doing so much work. But this is a result of 10 years of Microsoft investment. It's true. I think this has been a big realization for everybody that has not been as close to the research that was happening in the background. For everybody, ChatGPT was this big aha moment where all of a sudden these large language models had this massive breakthrough. All of a sudden they got to a point where their usefulness just skyrocketed and it made it possible for them to have commercial applications beyond what perhaps researchers even expected them to be able to do uh, in the months just immediately preceding. Absolutely. And so that breakthrough has just led to an incredible rush in terms of being able to build that technology into products and to package it in a way that it can be really useful and valuable to our commercial and consumer customers. Absolutely. There's something exciting about feeling like you're kind of at the heart of the star, right? You're like, we're close to the sun on this, but it also gives us this great opportunity to help others and to help other partners really take this opportunity to market in their spaces, right? Every partner has a little bit of different uh, focus on the way that they go to market. And that's really what we're, we're both, our teams are here to, to help with, but Microsoft as a whole is really leaning in. Let's level set first. What is Microsoft 365 Copilot? Like, let's just make sure everybody's operating with the same definition because it keeps expanding, I know. I think the first thing to do before we get into the product itself is just to understand that there's different ways of interacting with these large language models as a customer and end user and also as a partner that may be looking to build services and solutions. And the first thing that I think about is that, sure, there is a platform 
platform where there is now uh, uh, various models, the, the ChatGPT model through OpenAI is one of them, where you can build on it. You have the ability, for example, through Azure OpenAI to build your own artificial intelligence solutions. That's one model that you can use. There's a second model, which is where our Microsoft 365 Copilot comes in, where you have a packaged product, where it actually shows up as something that's ready to use by the end customer. Now, those are incredibly important for us because out of the box, you get a whole bunch of features, functionality that is going to be super useful and we'll talk a little bit more about how the integration between that and the Microsoft 365 ecosystem and framework actually delivers a lot of value. And then I would say the third piece is building on top of the second, which is the ability to then extend those, those co-pilots, the ability to then build plugins that have the ability to tap into line of business data and systems so that you have a level of customization there available to you. So I would say those are three main models for us to get our heads around. And what we're talking about here with Microsoft 365 Copilot is the out-of-box product that delivers a lot of value straight out of the box. But yeah. I think those three models are really important because as you approach, say, your 12, 36-month, and five-year plan for your organization, you know, if you're an executive leader in one of these partner organizations, you have to be thinking about which of those models you're going to invest in, which of those you're going to skill in, how you're going to be ready for customer demand in these areas. There's a lot of questions right now in our customer base, and we are relying on our partners, of course, to help us answer those questions. But I think first comes that decision about how are you going to go to market and how are you going to really leverage these three models uh, in your own organization. And I think the one that we wanted to double click on, you know, the one that we really wanted to uh, describe in more detail is Microsoft 365 Copilot. So if I can expand on what that is for just a few minutes. The starting point is I think everybody is now familiar with chat GPT and the experience. I think everybody has played around with it. We know that it broke records, the fastest technology to reach 100 million users. So the adoption records have been phenomenal. Um, the large language model is essentially this artificial intelligence engine that has been trained on all the information that exists in the internet and has the ability to conversationally through a chat interface answer questions in a way where the actual usefulness um, of the answers is, is superb. It's really incredible. And now what we're doing with Microsoft 365 Copilot is we're taking that large language model capability and we're allowing it to work in order to be able to answer questions grounded on the information that exists within your Microsoft 365 tenant. And we're surfacing that experience within the Microsoft 365 applications, such as Teams, such as Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, Excel and so on. And so what you get is you get the large language model, you get the Microsoft 365 data, which is your organizational data, and you get the experience within the Microsoft 365 apps. And those things together give you a co-pilot experience that is specific to your business and gives you answers and information and solutions that is specifically grounded within your organizational context. I want our partner ecosystem also to think about the fact that it's not just about how our customers are using it, but also how our partners will choose to use it in their organizations, right? And so being able to have that uh, business intelligence actualized through this chat interface uh, is a huge difference to things that we've done in the past. I really found it super transformative when I was starting to use it myself. Absolutely. This is going to be transformational. In fact, you know, you can compare it to many of the other major shifts that we've had, such as the shift from uh, a server client and on-premises uh, uh, solutions to the cloud. Yes. You know, that's kind of the magnitude of the shift that we're talking about over here. I think we're entering this era where everybody is going to use artificial intelligence in a way that it completely changes business processes and the way that we think about even building technology solutions. And we know that as a result of that, you know, this massive shift, no one is going to want to be left behind. Now, I think it's fair to say that we don't have all the answers right now. I think it's fair to say that we can't see how all of the uh, potential you know, solutions or the potential capabilities are going to be used um, in every single context, in every single scenario. But I think the learning journey and getting onto the learning journey is important. And so that's where I think we can be a really good partner to our ecosystem out there because we've got a broad investment across the spectrum as far as artificial intelligence is concerned. We've got a deep commitment to responsible AI 
and we are investing in the readiness, the enablement, and the go-to-market opportunities with our partners. Absolutely. The other thing is there's very specific scenarios like Microsoft Sales Copilot, right? I mean, I think about my days of building RFP answers and, and trying to find information quickly about the customers I was serving, anything that could have helped me understand that more clearly and more quickly to be able to respond to those customers was a good thing. And I think this is an evolution of those CRM systems uh, integrated in with Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams that really speeds your ability to respond to customers. That's a very concrete improvement in that particular scenario, but it's, it's just one of many that we're going to see change over this time. It's one of many, exactly. And over time, we're going to, I think, start building up this library, if you will, of these scenarios where artificial intelligence really has the ability to, to transform them and to deliver massive cost savings or massive productivity improvements as a result of applying this capability. And so we've got a sense, you know, we can sit here and we can theorize around, hey, it would be great for sales, it would be great for service agents in this particular way, you know, it would be great for marketing teams and so on. And we've done some of that initial work, but working with partners and working with customers, we're going to learn a lot more because everybody's gonna have the opportunity to apply their own creativity to the problems that face them and come up with these solutions and these applications. I find it pretty amazing that you and I are sitting here having a talk about functional artificial intelligence in our daily productivity life. I, I mean, this is a moment in history and I do think that everybody who's watching us now and listening to this conversation needs to lean into the fact that we are making history and we're doing it together with our Microsoft partners and our customers. This is definitely a learning journey. We're having a growth mindset. Being willing to experiment is going to be important. Figuring out how it works best for people and, and letting folks come up with new ideas and capturing those ideas and turning them into best practices and sharing them is going to be so important. But many people's experience with AI uh, comes from science fiction movies, <laughs> right? And you've seen a lot of concern and fear, some warranted, some not unwarranted, as we've talked about this as a company. Uh, you and I, of course, know about the deep commitment we have to trust, uh, to data privacy and protection, but share with the folks who are watching a little bit more about that, because I know that customers are asking our partners about this as well. This is so important for us to be able to reassure customers and to be able to address their questions and to provide guidance on the steps that they can take in order to make sure that their data is going to be secure and that they're not going to have unnecessary risk and exposure. I would start by contrasting uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot as a commercial grade solution built by us, you know, on our trust pillars versus what might otherwise be a consumer grade solution, which is available to, you know, everyone to use in terms of broad internet capabilities. The way that you think about that is very different. The way that we've architected this obviously is very different in order for us to make sure that we're understanding um, what the protections are that, that customers need to be able to put in place. The first one is just simply the ability to, to have peace of mind that your queries are not being ingested into the language model itself. We've seen examples of customers that have prevented their users, their employees, from using ChatGPT, for example, because they were concerned that the queries that were being entered into the system were then being used to feed the model and that was exposing some of their private IP. So that's something that doesn't happen within the Copilot environment. That's thing number one. Thing number two is that there's a, a natural inclination to assume that we train the large language model on the customer's data inside of the Microsoft 365 tenant. And we don't. The, the, the model is trained using publicly available information. And once it's trained, it has a skill set that can be applied to private information. But the data doesn't get ingested into the large language model. And we respect the data boundaries of the Microsoft 365 tenant so that the customer's data is not leaving the Microsoft 365 tenant. In fact, we inherit the same online services terms and conditions that customers sign when they sign up for Microsoft 365. Right, exactly. And I think that's really important. We're not taking your prompts and putting them in the system, and we're not training the large language model based on your data. It, it's just really fundamentally very simple. But we need to keep reinforcing this with our customers because there are concerns. And I've seen that people keep trying to parse that answer as if they were going to uncover a, a loophole. There actually isn't one because we have built this from the ground up over the space of 10 years. It's not a mature space in terms of how people are going to use it, but from a technology perspective, 
perspective and the architecture and the security that we've been thinking of, we've had a lot of time to think through this. We have. I'm glad that you brought that up because there's a lot of discussions and a lot of questions with this early stage technology around IP, around copyrights. And uh, in order to reassure our customers, we've just recently published the Copilot Copyright Commitment. What Microsoft is saying is that we have invested in responsible AI. We have put some safeguards into the system in order to honor the rights of IP producers, artists, or whoever might be out there. And as a result of that, we want our customers to have confidence that they can use Copilot without fear of legal repercussions. And so the commitment that we've made is that if one of our customers lands up as the subject of a lawsuit uh, because of a concern of IP infringement, copyright infringement, driven through the use of Copilot, then Microsoft will actually uh, intercede and will uh, support the, the customer and will defend that case on behalf of that customer so that customers can use it with confidence and can know that they don't have to worry about that additional legal exposure. That's the level of confidence we have in our capabilities and the security within it. This goes into a topic that I've always been, uh, you know, deeply invested in, which is Microsoft 365 governance. We can talk now a little bit about helping customers prepare, whether it's helping your own organization prepare or helping a customer prepare. There are some fundamentals that need to be addressed in your Microsoft 365 environment to get it ready for Copilot. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that because, of course, it's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. Well, let's just start with a little bit of the fundamentals fundamentals around the prerequisites. Yeah. So what we've announced is that from a licensing point of view, a customer needs to have Microsoft 365 E3 or Microsoft 365 E5 or Microsoft 365 Business Premium or Business Standard as a prerequisite in order to be able to use uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot because there are some dependencies on certain services in order for Microsoft 365 Copilot to work, to, to work appropriately. Um, one of them is obviously the deployment and use of identity, so Entra ID is an important service. Another one is importantly having your actual information and content in the cloud. So if you still have your documents sitting on some on-premises uh, service, then you'll want to bring that in. You'll want to put that onto OneDrive. You'll want to put that into SharePoint in order to make sure that that can be indexed and that that is then available for Copilot to be able to ground its answers on the information that you have available within the organization. But I think one of the biggest areas, and maybe this is you know a place where you can you can go a little bit deeper, is the work, the preparatory work that customers can do around data governance and making sure that the right data management policies are in place. Absolutely, and you know we often do this seminar on. My Microsoft 365 governance is always super well attended because there's a lot of unknowns in this area and I think this is a tremendous opportunity for partners to build this up as a part of their offer in co-pilot readiness is really taking people through the core capabilities that already exist in Microsoft 365 that many customers aren't using so that people are only seeing the data they're supposed to and really the core fear is co-pilot is going to surface something much like Microsoft search uh, concerns were or delve that a user doesn't have access to. That's why you should really take a look at your environment and maybe do a little hygienic cleanup before you start thinking about deploying Copilot. That to me is a fundamental part of the offer as you're working with customers, uh, is to make sure they're in a healthy state. These are fundamentals, they're not unique to Copilot, but Copilot is a great catalyst, a great reason for you to go and address those things if you haven't up until now because of the power that it has to surface information. And we've published great guidance on data protection, governance, uh, readiness, all of that. I really want partners to feel confident that they can share that confidence level with their customers uh, because Microsoft is standing behind them. Yeah, it's very encouraging to see that because I think it's what's needed in order to allow us to move forward and take that next step in order to turn it into something that is more broadly adopted at these early stages. Absolutely. Responsible AI is not just words on a slide or a web page. It's really amazing to see the thousands of people working on this, all with the focus on trust, responsibility, and long-term value for the ecosystem and the planet as a whole. Satya talks a lot about creating equity around the world and, and what it really means to empower every person and every organization to achieve more. I see in 
real time the feedback that's received from customers and how that's just got a straight line into the engineering teams yeah. where they're doing very quick iterations to be able to take that feedback and you know under the umbrella of responsible AI and making sure that we are adhering to those principles of transparency and fairness, you know, using that in order to adjust and tweak to make sure that we stay on the right track. Absolutely. We have our own internal rollout of Copilot that we've been running and working with end users and understanding their scenarios. And we'll be publishing that information that partners will be able to use with their customers to say, not only has Microsoft created this technology, but they've also used it internally. And what have they learned from driving the adoption of it? And we're very well partnered with uh, the Microsoft Digital team uh, and the employee experience team to take those learnings and share them with partners and share them with customers. That's going to be an important asset. I want to talk a little bit more about driving adoption of Microsoft 365 Copilot. What have you been seeing about driving adoption and in the partner space specifically about the opportunity there? Yeah, well, first of all, it's been great to be on the journey with you over the last few years as we built out the muscle and the ecosystem around Teams when we first started building out adoption and change man management as a core competency within the partner ecosystem. And it's incredible to see how our partners have actually really grown and evolved over time. I remember it wasn't that long ago, maybe just five, six years ago, when it wasn't a core competency within the Microsoft partner ecosystem. And now I can't think of one of our modern work partners that doesn't have some level of skill in that area. And and, and that skill is going to come in really useful here, and it's something that they're going to need to invest in even further. I'll say one of the biggest conversations that we're having with partners and with customers and through partners with customers is really this notion of identifying the high value scenarios, mm -hmm. because that's where you can really uh, transform the excitement about this new technology into the business value that it can help realize. And there's a piece here where, yes, of course, it's going to be useful and exciting to uh, many different users in many different contexts. But at some point, uh, business leaders are going to want to be able to quantify that and are going to be, want to be able to articulate that in a, in a very real way. And so, of course, there's some of the traditional economic studies, total economic studies that we would do around things like time saved and productivity gains. But I think in this scenario, it's also going to be important uh, for us and for our partners especially to be able to take that one step further and to say, well, productivity saved within the context of this persona, within this role, within, within this industry is actually resulting in the transformation of this process, in the transformation of uh, this use case such that it is delivering results that are driving the organizational KPIs, that are driving more revenue, that are driving more cost savings in a very real way. And I really do believe that this technology, these products have the ability to deliver that. So if you're a seller, going back to the earlier example, it's not just that you can create a proposal faster, it's that your actual deal cycle time should improve. You should be able to handle more customers because of the tools that you have available to you. You should theoretically be able to close deals faster. And as a result of that, you should be able to drive more revenue or you should be able to be more efficient with your selling. One area of investment that I'm really excited about is the work that we're doing with the early access program customers around understanding what those high value scenarios are for them and then packaging up that approach and making it available as assets and as IP that our partners can then reuse and build on where they can then inject their own experiences and their own understanding of their customers environments to be able to take that further. So that's a really key area that I think is important to establish up front is the value opportunities within a customer's environment. You're hitting on something that's very important as well. Many of our large customers, even some of the largest I can think of, um, still have work to do in terms of having what they call user experience leads or service adoption specialists partnered with business leaders, partnered with IT in their organization. There is a special magic that happens in understanding that insight of what technology is driving in your company when you have those three perspectives put together. We call it a customer enablement team. And you know, I think our partners can help our customers really define that customer enablement team. And you know, it also gives us a key group of people to partner with in driving the insights and driving deployment, adoption, and continuous, continuous improvement. But the days of that historical IT approach of kind of the waterfall project management methodology are over. We all have leaned into this agile service management idea of identifying value opportunity areas in, 
in the customer space from an IT perspective and prioritizing our backlog of work accordingly based on business need. That conversation uh, has to also leverage the perspective of the users. And that's where your service adoption specialist and user experience folks are really going to play an important role in this transformation because they are closest to the folks who are actually doing the work. One of the things I know people get concerned about is AI coming in and taking their job and this, that, and the other. I don't think that's the conversation at all. I think the conversation, as you put it, is really about how can AI help me be even better at what I do? How can it liberate me, myself in particular, from the drudgery of going through my inbox and figuring stuff out. Everyone who knows me knows I'm email challenged. Um, I've been in Teams for way too long and using Copilot to help me find that information that I need for my inbox is great. No one's really gonna know that unless a user experience person is actually talking to me. So employee feedback, integration, we've seen this in our early adoption customers, that that ability to really understand what's happening at that user level helps inform business leaders and, and IT about how to really leverage this in the best, uh, most effective manner. So, you know, that's, that's an opportunity for our partners to lead in and ask our, our customers do you have this customer enablement team enabled? Uh, because we have tools for that customer enablement team, right? Um, on adoption.microsoft.com, we have a co-pilot hub. There's tools that are there now. More is coming. And it's all around empowering those folks to drive that value and gain those insights. So I'm excited for the partners to really lean in there and take that to our customers because I feel like that's going to be what we're going to learn as a company at Microsoft from all that happens between our partners and our customers, uh, I think is going to continue to drive us to innovate. And what you're touching on is so important because I think that we're going to need to go through a whole skilling journey with the end users in order to teach them how to use productivity tools in a whole different way. And, and maybe a generation or two from now, this is just going to be embedded in people that come into the workplace and know how to use AI agents just by default. But for people that are in the workplace today, it's something that they're going to have to get used to. It's something that they're going to have to adopt. And talking about my own personal experience, there are certain functions within Copilot that are very natural. It's very easy for me to finish a meeting and for me to ask Copilot for a meeting summary and for me to use that instead of me having to sit there and write up all of the notes. So that's super simple and very intuitive. But maybe there are other things that require a little bit more getting used to in terms of how do you write a document? How do you pull together a set of information from different sources? You know, getting used to that as a, as a muscle that you're going to build is something that we're going to have to help users adopt as a first primary way of working in order for them to keep pace and in order for them to be efficient in this new AI-enabled world. This idea of being a prompt engineer, of really having that be a specialty area, I think the partners need to be thinking about how they are going to skill that in their organizations. Obviously, our customers will be thinking about that as well. But in many organizations, it's not going to make sense for me to invest in having my own prompt engineers or my, or my own folks to build and extend upon uh, the AI capabilities that Microsoft is now offering. They're going to turn to the partner community for that skill set. And so now is the time to, to have your staff uh, be using it, uh, be getting familiar, because for me, they came and said, hey, Caruana, will you help us drive adoption of Copilot? And I said, of course, uh, because I'm a person who likes to say yes, and I thought it was a cool project to get to work on. What I didn't understand at that moment was how it was going to change my own work style. Right? We like write a lot of strategy documents in engineering, so now I can take a strategy document and ask PowerPoint to turn it into a slide deck so I can share it with the team who's going to be working on it. I mean, it's just changed my day-to-day -day life. I was in Power Automate the other day and was able to simply tell Copilot the kind of uh, a flow that I wanted and it started to craft it. This fundamental change in the way I interact with my computer uh, I think is really something that we all need to have hands-on experience with. So I encourage people who are making these decisions, get your hands on Copilot uh, you know, when you can so that you can have that personal experience. It's going to alter the way you approach this work. It, it certainly has changed my approach to it for sure. Yeah. Very exciting time and 
obviously that then introduces a ton of new opportunity for our partners yes. too. You know, one of the things that we'll be uh, working with our partners on is the Microsoft 365 Center of Excellence that provides a center of gravity for co-pilot capabilities. And of course, we have our partner community around this as well. And both of those things are going to be fundamental to moving our customers forward, to continuing to create, but also focus the opportunity. One of the things I think the partners can do right now is help our customers understand those high value scenarios you were talking about, because it, there's so much about this right now that it feels a little bit overwhelming. Let's take it back to where there is going to be true value for the customer and for the partner organization so that we can chart our way through this process um, and learn together. There's certainly going to be customers that don't want to think about uh, each one of the AI products in isolation, what they want to think about the broader landscape. And so I think that there's an advisory, an AI advisory opportunity for partners that have those high-end consulting skills to be able to help customers looking across the business from left to right to say, right. hey, the different types of AI models that we mentioned at the, at the top of the discussion, this is how you can utilize them in these different ways, shapes, and forms. Like this is the, these are the biggest AI transformation opportunities within your business. So AI advisory is definitely an opportunity for partners that have those consulting skills. I would say the second one that we spoke about was getting customers environments ready. So making sure that you're getting the deployment of the Microsoft 365 technologies right, identity, uh, data in the cloud, making sure that the data policies and that the content policies are what they should be so that you're ready in order to be able to take advantage of the AI capabilities. And then going into the value identification, the adoption and change management, how do we skill the individuals in order to be able to get true value out of it. And then last but not least is the extensibility opportunity. So being able to build plug that then allow you to tap into line of business systems, being able to uh, then surface information and insights where the, in, where the answers that you're getting back are grounded not just on the ad hoc data that you've got, uh, not just on the unstructured data, but also on the structured data that may exist within your line of business systems. Absolutely, I love that summary. And along the way, I, I hope our partners are continuing to build their relationships within our customer space to identify those customer enablement teams to get the right people around the table because at the end of the day we, it's important that we take a people first approach to this work right we're about enabling people we're about enabling organizations to really achieve more and and having the right relationships in an organization with business leaders as well as technology leaders and decision makers is going to make that uh, a great opportunity for everyone and it'll move those relationships forward uh, so that you can you know, be that trusted advisor that you already are for our customers. As partners are hearing this, we are just a very short way away from uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot being generally available. And so, you know, we would absolutely encourage our partners um, as soon as they can to implement within their own environments, as you said, get that first-hand experience, take advantage of the adoption assets that, that you've called out. Uh, we'll be sharing a link over here where you can go and you can get the latest and greatest assets where partners can train themselves, where you can get our go-to-market packages so that you can go and present to customers and you can use that and incorporate that into your own sales and adoption methodologies. Uh, so please take advantage of all of those things in order to get yourselves ready to be able to service your customers and take advantage of this great opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ariel. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And that wraps up today's episode. Don't forget that it's a part of a series featuring some of our most experienced and innovative global executives, packed full of great insights and examples. So make sure to check out all our other episodes. And that wraps up today's episode. Don't forget that this episode is a part of a series featuring some of our most experienced and innovative global executives, packed full of great insights and examples of how to make the most out of working alongside Microsoft. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our other episodes. No matter your industry or area of focus, the Microsoft Global Partner Enablement Team is here to enable you and your teams to achieve more. If you want to hear a little more of this episode, we have a podcast which has some more of our discussion and some bonus content. If there's an area of cloud innovation you'd like to hear more about, 
please send us a note at salesenablement-gsi at microsoft.com so that we can create content that meets your enablement needs. Thank you for listening. Thank you for engaging with us. And thank you for being a Microsoft partner. We'll see you on the next episode of the Microsoft Cloud Executive Enablement Series.